am I a fitness nerd? Um, yeah, 100%. Do I own it? I sure do. You know, we are the sum total of all of our decisions. That's not one that I'm like real proud of, but it is a part of my metabolic history and it is a part of why I am where I am now. Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're gonna talk about muscle wasting, what it is and why you should care about it. And I'm literally gonna give like the kindergartner version of this so that it's not complicated and it helps you understand like, why should you care about this? You're losing weight, right? water weight, fat, and of course a portion of that is muscle. Now we wanna control the amount of muscle that we're losing because the more muscle that you lose, the fewer calories you're to consume when you are at maintenance. So for me personally, I have lost, so I started at 185 and I'm currently 177, so that's a total of eight pounds down. The scale that I use keeps track of all of that for me, and so it's telling me that I have lost 0.8 pounds is muscle. Even though I'm not like thrilled about that number, it's it's 10% is an acceptable number. Let's just deal with the two basics, right? Muscle and fat. So if I've lost 10% muscle, then 90% was fat. Anytime you're on a weight loss journey, you're going to lose weight. There is no way around that. So the goal is minimize the muscle loss, not avoid it. Can't be avoided. Okay, so why do we care about this? At maintenance, I'm gonna circle back to this at the end of the video, but so you understand why this is important. At the beginning of your journey, you're trying to lose weight. Let's say you have 50 pounds to lose. So you lose your 50 pounds. Well, how long could that possibly take you? Let's say it even took you a year, even two years. Okay, well, that's two years. I assume that the goal from there, right, is to stay whatever that weight is. So let's say that target weight was 125. We wanna stay there. We don't wanna be doing this. So the more lean muscle that we have on our body at the end of that weight loss journey, you're gonna be able to eat more calories and stay at that weight. And that's why this matters. So even though it's maybe a little technical here and there, stick with me because I promise you, you don't wanna do the yo-yo dieting thing for the rest of your life. Listen to this information. How do we control this? Actually, really, really simple. Don't let anybody complicate this for you because really it's not complicated, okay? You have to keep your protein up, and I'm gonna circle back to that in a second, give you some examples, easy stuff, and you need to incorporate some kind of resistance training. No, guys, you don't have to go and become a jug head at the gym and be throwing around weights and all that. You don't have to do that. Get a set of five and 10 pound dumbbells, like these are the ones that I have. I use them all the time. I love them. And you could do so many different exercises. And I also have this, it's right here, I'll show you a weight bar, which I bought during that whole global health situation when gyms were closed, because you can do squats and you know deadlifts and all kinds of stuff that kind of tightens up your core, which is one of the main areas that we tend to see weight loss. You definitely wanna have some kind of resistance training, guys. You need to do that so that you are building lean muscle as you are going through this process. Three days a week, you're good to go. You don't have to become a maniac about it. For my measure, I'm not a cardio monkey. I can't stand cardio. I don't love it. Even when I was training for competitions, I absolutely despise doing cardio. I just, I'm not a fan. I don't like it. I don't like the very high impact nature of running. And also, you know, I just, I guess it's because I like to be able to breathe. So I'm crazy like that. But and you can look this up, okay? Walking, 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 walking. One of the best exercises you can do to burn fat is walking. During that whole, again, global health situation when I couldn't go to the gym, I walked a lot and I lost literally no joke, like 30 or 40 pounds walking, just, just walking. Okay. You walked every other day and then you weight trained on the days that you weren't walking. That is just a good recipe for the rest of your life. Now, as far as food, we got to keep the protein up. So it's going to help us to build lean muscle, right? Now what we want to do is keep the muscle that we already have. We do that. We just eat a lot of protein. Okay. Focus on what you eat. And I'm going to do a whole video. I think it's like two weeks from now where I talk about macros, right? So there are three kinds of things that you want to eat that you really, really want to focus on. Complex carbs. And I'm going to give examples of all three of these in a second. Healthy fats, high quality proteins. And guys, this is stuff you've probably heard a bajillion times, but let me tell you why. Complex carbs, these are gonna be things like sweet potatoes, brown rice, broccoli, kidney beans. Not the fun stuff, chips, donuts, right? Those are simple carbs. They're simple carbs are quickly absorbed into the bloodstream, they are quickly broken down for energy, and they are quickly stored as fat. Complex carbs are much higher in fiber, which means they break down more slowly, and it means they digest more slowly, and also they cause a much lower spike in blood glucose. And since weight gain has so much to do with your glucose levels, we wanna keep those glucose levels down as low as possible. Healthy fats. Healthy fats help with feeling satisfied. They also help when eaten with complex carbs or even simple carbs. Healthy fats help to bring down that glucose spike. So avocados, nuts, butter, 
almonds, cheese, all the things that most people on a weight loss journey are gonna tell you, oh my God, don't eat that, avoid that, like to play. Guys, that's the stuff that I was eating hardcore when I was training. I was just eating real whole food, like all the examples I'm giving you right here. I didn't ever buy low fat this or, I, come on, no, I just didn't. I just ate real food that was usually single ingredient and I focused on this. Again, I'll circle back to all of that in macros. Okay, and high quality protein. We want high quality protein because it helps you to maintain muscle, it helps you to build muscle, and it keeps you feeling full. So eggs, chicken, fish, lean beef, and yogurt. Guys, these are just simple examples because I know when people get on a weight loss journey, everybody and their brother is like trying to sell you this product and that product and oh, you need to buy specialty. No, you don't. No, you don't. You just need to eat real food in the right quantities for whatever your goal is. Like I would be eating very different things if I were in the middle of a bulk, like I were in a season where I was trying to put on massive muscle versus right now. Just like I touched on earlier in the video, loss is, is fun and complicated and you know frustrating process. Once you've lost the weight, you've lost the weight, right? Now we're like, okay, cool, how much can I eat and not gain a ton of weight? I don't know about you guys, but for me personally, I'm not here for the counting every single calorie for the rest of my life. No, thank you. That's why we put these healthy habits in place, we eat real whole foods, and then we just maintain our weight. I mean, simple. The fitness industry really complicates this whole thing. When I say lean muscle, Let's say you have a 140 pound person who has 100 and let's say 15 pounds of lean muscle, 25 pounds of body fat. And you have another person who has 140 pounds who may have 80 pounds or 95 pounds of lean muscle. And then the rest of that is made up in fat. Lean versus non-lean, that's what I'm talking about. Person with a lot of lean muscle mass going to be able to burn more calories. This is before we come back to how much you can eat. At rest, right? That means sleeping, breathing, walking around, getting a cup of water. You're gonna be burning more calories because muscle weighs more than fat. It's harder to move around. As a result, the caloric expenditure to move a body that has more lean muscle on it is higher. It's not like substantially higher, but it is definitely higher and every calorie counts, especially when they're ones we don't even have to work for. Having more lean muscle mass improves your insulin sensitivity. And if you know anything about weight loss or if you're just getting started, you will soon come to realize that insulin sensitivity is something we need to keep an eye on. And for the short version, insulin sensitivity is, what does your body do when you eat? Does it burn it or does it store it? Obviously, we wanna burn it, we don't wanna store it. If having more muscle mass increases my body's ability to burn it and not store it, well then yeah, I wanna do that. If you have more lean muscle mass, you are going to, your body is just naturally going to burn off more energy and store more energy as fat. Of course, we didn't just lose all that weight, so we just put it back on, no thank you. So your body's basal metabolic rate is the amount of calories that it burns just breathing, running your brain, sleeping, just without doing any kind of activity to actually burn calories. It's your basal metabolic rate, which is higher for people with lean muscle mass. So you guys are seeing a trend here, right? <laughs> At maintenance weight, you, you wanna have more lean muscle mass because it just makes your life easier. Just be sitting around burning more calories. I don't know about you, but I'm here for that. That you have a lean person, right? At the end of a weight loss journey, if you've been weight training and whatever, whatever, let's say that you would probably be able, and again, guys, this is all dependent on height, weight, lifestyle, so this is just for easy math, all right? This is not medical advice. I can use my own numbers. When I was like shredded as hell and lifting all the time, guys, I could eat 1,700, 2,500 calories in a day, did not put on a pound. I mean, I was just plowing through food all the time and not gaining any weight, and I was lean, like not fluffy, not bloated, just lean, lean, lean. Conversely, as I got older, and none of the things that I used to do worked and my body just started to accumulate body fat. And also I didn't train as much in the gym. I, if I ate more than 1200 calories in a day, you, I was packing on weight, 1200 calories. I mean, that's a miserable existence. I don't enjoy eating 1200 calories. So when I get to the end of my journey, my weight loss journey, I wanna be able to come in eating around 1700 to 2000 calories a day. If I want to, you know, if there are days where I'm like, hey, I'm just not feeling it today. Okay, we'll have a 1500 calorie day. But for me, that's still pretty low. That's kind of like what I need to feel like I'm not that hangry person in a Snickers commercial. I, I don't want to be that person. That's not fun. Like I want to be lean. I don't want to be unhappy. And then the very last thing that I wanted to touch on is metabolic damage, which I assure you, I have done plenty of to myself. Circa being anorexic for 
way longer than I needed to be, several years. And I mean, I was severely anorexic. Yes, that caused metabolic damage that I'm dealing with now in my late 40s. You know, we are the sum total of all of our decisions. That's not one that I'm like real proud of, but it is a part of my metabolic history. And it is a part of why I am where I am now. Playing with my metabolism is not something that I want to do. It's the reason why during this weight loss, you will not see me cutting my calories to like 12 and 1300 calories. I'm not going to do it. I don't care if it takes me a year to lose the whatever it is I have left 52 pounds. I'm not going to cut my calories that low. And it isn't because I can't do it. I can do it. But then my mental health is going to suffer. My family's going to suffer because I'm not going to have the energy that I need. I'm not going to do that. I'm, even if it means that it slows my weight loss down, okay, I'm fine with that. I mean, you know, I wish it didn't, but if I'm dropping all this weight because I'm only eating 12, 1300 calories a day, and then I get to the end of maintenance, and let's say that I want to come off a of semi-glutide, but I can't because now my body is like, hey, the only way that we can maintain this weight is if you're only eating 1200 calories, taking semi-glutide and walking and weight training and all of that. No, I'm not. I would rather eat during this loss, 15 to 1700, still a reduction, but it's not like crazy, 15 to 1700 calories, giving my body an ample caloric deficit, not slowing my metabolism down to the point where I'm going to pay for it forever. I, that's just, I mean, I don't know. Everybody's going to feel differently about how they want to lose weight. You know, how, I guess that depends on how many times you've been to this rodeo, all the things. Like, I'm not that worried about getting to 125 in two months. I mean, that would be so cool, but I know that if that happened, it would be a lot of muscle loss. And even though I do get very frustrated in the mornings when my weight is coming down so slowly, a lot of that is probably because of the kinds of things that I'm eating and the amount that I'm eating. And that is all because I am trying to preserve muscle and lose fat. And, and I can see just looking at the data from my smart scale that that's exactly what's happening. I'm losing 90% fat and 10% muscle. So look, I'm here for that. Those numbers are excellent. Even if that timeline doesn't agree with my ego, because guys, that's what it is, right? It's your ego, not yours, it's mine. I, don't, I really don't care. Even if daily you see me becoming frustrated with that, my long-term goal is overall health, overall metabolic health, and I wanna have a lifestyle that does not marry me to, okay, well, you can only have 1,200 calories, otherwise you're gonna blow up like a puffer fish. Like, I can't live like that. I can't live like that anymore. I have done that for the last couple of years in an attempt to try to control this weight gain that just keeps climbing up. But once I get myself out of this hole, I, I'm just, I can't do that. It has not been a fun existence living like that. So. So guys, if you are on a weight loss journey or you know someone who's going on a weight loss journey, click like, leave me a comment, subscribe, share with another skinny friend because guys, a weight loss journey, I mean, it's a lot of things, right? It's frustrating. It's funny. It's easier to go through it with other people. So it's like I say in all my videos, right? Patience is king. Information is key. Come to the skinny squad and we're going to do this together. We're going to focus on becoming leaner versions of ourselves using information and tools and we're just gonna get there one damn pound at a time we're gonna get there you know why because there's a quote and it says whether you believe you can or you believe you cannot you are correct and I believe that I will lose this weight I know it I know it in my bones and I know you will too if you just keep showing up so just keep showing up show back up on Friday which is when I do my this will be my one like month one wrap up. I can't believe it's been a whole month. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that video and I will see you skinny babes in the next one. Bye-bye.